Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to be continuing the coilover install by fabricating the coilover towers. So like I said, we're gonna be working on the coilover towers today. We've got two days to do this. I, I've got two days to get them basically cut out and tacked into place and make sure this is gonna work the way I, I'm thinking about it in my head. You would think two days is enough, but the time goes by very quick. I'm sure I'm gonna end up cutting out some of these pieces about a half a dozen times just to make sure they're the way I want them and probably spending too much time on certain pieces. Like I said, the time just goes by pretty quickly. But the goal for this video, by the end of this video, I wanna have the coilover towers basically cut out, both sides cut out, out and tacked into place and have the Jeep sitting on its own weight in the front. I want to put the weight of the Jeep onto the coilovers just to make sure that these coilovers are going to compress as much as they're supposed to. Otherwise, we're going to have a Jeep taller than this and I don't want that. They should compress to five inches of shaft showing. I have faith in AccuTune. When we had them build Jake's coilovers and his Wrangler, they compress exactly to four inches like they were supposed to. So like I said, I have faith in them. I don't want this thing any taller than it is right now. I'm going to stop talking about that because I literally say that in every video. Anyways, I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to get right to these coilover towers. So I was doing some things on this last night and I got a little carried away and I started on the coilover towers off camera so I'm sorry about that but I'll catch you guys up to speed right now I, I mean all I did last night was take about a hundred measurements to make sure these coilover towers are gonna work and right now I have a cardboard piece cut out that like the basic shape of the rear part of the coilover tower. And this is what we're gonna be cutting out here very shortly. I've got a brand new piece of quarter inch we went and picked up. It's four foot by three foot. So we got plenty of metal to go around. So I won't bore y'all with the measurements I took, but basically, basically the hood isn't too far from this cap. So I was using this cap as like a base measurement from the top, from this corner, cause the hood slopes down a bit. From this corner of the coilover tower on the back here, the hood is a quarter inch. It's gonna be extremely close, but that's how tall this needs to be in order for the Jeep to be at this ride height and not any taller. We could certainly go much shorter with, with this, go a couple inches, and then we'd have a couple inches between the top of this and the hood, but then this thing would just raise up quite a bit, and that's not an option in my book. So we're gonna get this designed out on AutoCAD, and we'll get this cut out on the CNC. We're gonna get that tacked into place. You can see down here, you can see that, we come down quite a bit onto the unibody, so we're gonna have plenty to weld to. It's gonna be plenty strong, and then we'll end up boxing this in later on once we know that this, that this height will work. My thinking is to get both of these backing plates cut out and tacked into place, make some mounts to mount to the coilover, then we'll somewhat brace them in the middle so they don't bend, and then we'll put the Jeep down on, onto the weight of itself. That's the plan right now, so let's see if we can make it happen. The new piece of quarter inch is square on the machine. The new design, the first coilover tower we're gonna be cutting out is gonna be cut out in this corner. I'm gonna try to maximize the amount of space that we have because hopefully we don't have to, but if we need to cut out, you know, like a third coilover tower, if we screw this up, then, uh, then we'll have plenty of room, but hopefully that's not the case. Anyways, I'm excited, let's get this cut out. So I'll show you my design right here on the computer real quick. These four diamonds on the bottom here are so we can weld to the unibody stiffeners. We're gonna be welding all along the perimeter here, but that's just so we can get some extra bite to it. These two on the top are just the OEM uh, track bar location. I'm not sure if we're gonna be using those holes, but I want the option to if I want to. These two, uh, there's like some two flat studs that protrude from the unibody. Those are just so, we're gonna be welding to them, but that's so the piece doesn't interfere with them. These two are just for design and to take some weight out of the piece. And then those two up there are gonna be so we can weld from the backside to the coilover mounts. There's the final cut. So it's got all the middle pieces cut out so far, and now it's gonna do the perimeter.
Check out how this fits. This fits really nicely. The holes for the old track bar mount actually came in handy on this, on this piece. I was able to line the piece up really good with those. I just by putting a bolt through them. And then you can see these are the flat studs I was talking about. We're gonna end up welding those shut. Now, two things I noticed on the unibody down here. The unibody has a slight curve in it. I didn't, I didn't account for that. I didn't really notice that to begin with. So there is a slight gap between the piece and the unibody, about an eighth inch or so. That, I don't think it's gonna be that much of a problem. We can fill that in with weld if we really need to, if it's not gonna be a problem. But I think we'll probably end up tightening up the two bolt holes that, for the track bar right here. We'll tighten those up, bring in the piece as much as we possibly can, and that, that curve shouldn't be a problem. Now up top here, I already knew this was gonna be a problem, but I wanted to talk about it now. You can see the little divertin valve for the master. This is hitting that rear, the rear tower. I didn't think it was gonna hit the rear tower. I thought it was just gonna hit the side and I was gonna be able to cut a hole in the side piece that we're gonna be putting here. So it could kind of stick through a little, but it looks like it's gonna be hitting the, the rear piece as well. So what we're gonna do, and I already thought of this, we're gonna be unbolting this piece here. It has a little bracket that attaches to the master. We're gonna be unbolting that and just putting that somewhere else, basically. But I mean, honestly, what we'll probably do is just move it over a little bit towards uh, the passenger side, and that should take care of that problem. I think I still will put a big hole on this side of the coilover tower, on this side piece that we're gonna be making, just so if I ever have to replace this master, we'll have room to pull it out, pull it out off of the stud and, and take it out. Because you can see, we're gonna be extremely close. So other than those two things, this is looking really good. It's also at 90 degrees, it's actually 88.9. If I'm within a degree, even, even better, within a half a degree, I'm happy with that. Right now I have it ratchet strapped because it wanted to pull towards the driver's side a little bit, but it's looking really good. Now there is going to be another problem, a bigger problem than the two things I just showed you. To show you, I'm gonna take this coilover out and we're gonna get the hood closed. All right, we got the coilover out. So now let's get this hood shut and I'll show you all what I'm talking about. You can see, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Why is that closing? Wait a minute. <laughs> that is actually, that's actually a good sign. So let's take a look up in here through this uh, coilover hole. So look at this. So that's the hood support we got right here. And I actually thought that this was gonna go a little higher than that, but now I'm remembering what I was thinking earlier. So let me fit my hand up here. This actually is not touching that hood support, but it's probably about a centimeter away or literally like a 16th of an inch. That is so close. Now I was thinking we were gonna have to cut that hood support to get that to close for now, just to see how it was gonna look. Now, even though the rear section of that coilover tower doesn't touch that little hood support, we're still gonna need to cut it. And that's because the way I designed that, coil that rear coilover tower, these things are gonna be mounted extremely tall and very high up on that piece. Now we're gonna go ahead and make the mount for that rear section of the coilover tower so we can get this coilover bolted into there. That rear section of the coilover tower isn't touching the hood support, but this little section right here will be. From here on up on the coilover, that's gonna be taking up the space of that hood support. That's how tall these are gonna be mounted in there. We're, we're working with very tight clearances. So we're gonna have to go ahead and take a cotton wheel to that hood support. I'm not afraid of making the hood flimsy or anything. It's literally just a few inches on each side that we're gonna be taking out out of that hood support. And if we terminate it correctly, it shouldn't be a problem. I was also thinking something that would give us a little more space over here underneath of this hood is if we put some hood louvers on this Jeep. Obviously that wouldn't give us all that much room but it would give us like an extra 16th of an inch or two to work with we can use all the room we can get for this so let's go ahead i'm gonna go ahead and mark this and we'll take a cotton wheel of this and get it cut out now i figured it might make more sense if i drew it out for y'all what i was talking about so here this box right here is the coilover tower a, a very bad depiction of it and then this weird thing in the middle is the coilover the dotted section is the sex is the part of the coilover that's inside of the coilover tower, and then this little half moon section is the coilover that's pop that's going to be popping out and taking up the space of that hood support. The top of the coilover, in my head at least, the design I'm thinking of 
is gonna be like this. The top of the coilover is gonna slightly stick out of the top of the coilover tower. And that very small section that is sticking up out of the tower is gonna be taking up the space of that hood support. So hopefully that kind of clears it up and you understand why I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this hood support. I imagine it would be easier and not take up as much room if I made these towers out of DOM, but that's not the look I'm going for. I think this box design is gonna be a really clean look for this setup. Here is the little section that we got cut out. You can see it's very thin, so it was very easy and quick to cut. And then here's the little section we got cut out right there. There was no welds that had to be cut or anything. It's not welded to the hood, at least in this section. There was just some glue and whatnot holding it down. But yeah, that's taken care of. Now let's go ahead and design some mounts that we're gonna be welding onto this piece right here, this rear piece, so we can get these coilovers mounted in and get this Jeep down on its own weight. Now the rest of the day, I spent screwing around. I spent a lot of time designing some tabs for the coilovers that ultimately were not going to work. Actually, my entire plan was just tacking on some tabs and temporarily reinforcing them so I could put the weight of the Jeep onto the coilovers was just a bad idea and I quickly decided to take another route. My new plan is to just build the towers and hope they work so we won't be wasting any metal. I spent the later part of the day designing a really nice top plate along with some better functioning tabs. This is a much better idea. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta go for it. All right, day two on the coilover towers. I was in here pretty late last night, but I got a lot done and I hopefully can get a lot done today as well. Now we've got the driver's side basically figured out. I've got this right now is made out of a couple pieces, three main pieces, the rear backing plate, the top plate, and then the side plate, this goes down and is welded to the inner fender right here. And then we also have two brackets that actually hold on the coilover. You can see how far through we have a hole cut out right here on the top that allows for this to stick through the coilover. I'm pretty confident that this design will work no problem. Right now, it's completely flexed out. It's bolted in up here and down there. The suspension is all the way down on this side. It's that full droop. And we have probably about, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see about three, in, uh, three eighths of an inch between like the side of the coilover and the rear of the tower. You know, that's better than nothing, <laughs> so I'll take it. At first, I, last night I was pretty frustrated because I thought it was hitting, but it just comes to find out that this actual had moved over quite a bit. So it was touching, but it's not anymore, so that's a good sign. That's a better view, you can see it right there. That's the, the widest part of the coilover is this black top piece. This is uh, probably like the top, top plate they call it about a three eighths of an inch between it. So that should be fine. Today I need to work on getting this side all squared away. I got all the pieces cut out for it. I just got to put it together. And then I, we're going to need a front plate and a rear plate. The rear plate is going to be easier. We need at least one of the plates, I think, to be able to put the Jeep down on its own weight. So this doesn't flex or anything. I think we're going to go ahead and build the rear plates just because it's going to be easier. The front plate is going to have to have a big hole so this reservoir can come through it. Not sure how I want to do that yet. So like I said, we're going to do the rear plates. I'm going to get that all taken care of and I'll check back in with you guys once I have it all together and we're ready to flex out the Jeep. I made quick work of the rear plate, got it cut out, put a single bend in it, and now we're able to move on. Little progress so far. I made this piece, it came out good, which is which is really good because I didn't have to waste a big piece of metal like this. But this is the rear piece for the coilover tower. It's gonna go over there near the master and the brake booster. Had to put a bend in it. And then we have this oval up here, which is gonna be for access to the coilover, the top bolt for it. And then this is so, this hole is just so, let me show you. In case we ever have to take this master cylinder off, I think we would be able to get it off without pushing it into, like without the coilover tower getting in the way. But that hole is just so, like we could put it into it slightly and then take it on out. So hopefully that would be enough if we ever had to replace that. Well, I thought I was recording when I just welded this up. I just tacked it in the place, but I guess not. So I'll just show you guys what I did. You can see we got the nice piece that we, uh, we had bent up not too long ago, got it tacked into place. And it, it looked really good. It fits really nicely in there. Took some good measurements. It was tough because I had to take a few angles as well, but worked out in the end. Pretty nice. I did notice my little half circle right here. It wouldn't, you can get a wrench in there or whatnot, but, and you can get this socket on there if you needed to, but it, it hits the bottom of this bracket. So we'll probably just, we'll leave this one because we can just get a wrench on that one. But for over here, the one that we're gonna be using a socket on, 
will just come down with that hole a little more. Should take care of that issue. Like I said, I already have just about everything I need already cut out for the passenger side. I did it all yesterday before calling it a night just so I had less to do today. I opened up the hole for the coilover a little more, cut out a rear piece for the tower, tacked it all together, and now, finally, we can drop the weight of the Jeep onto these coilovers. The coilover towers are all taken care of right now. They're all tacked into place. Ash and I actually just got back from Ian. We went to one of our favorite places, which is... Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, <laughs> one of our favorite chains. So now it's time to install the coilovers into the Jeep and see if they're gonna work for this setup. We're gonna go ahead and set the preload to these coilovers. I think AccuTune, I gotta look at the email again. I think they recommended one inch of preload. So we're gonna go ahead and set that, get them in the Jeep and see what we're sitting at for the shaft showing at ride height. Preload is very important for these coilovers to function properly. Preload is the initial tension on the springs while the coilover is fully extended. To get the one inch of preload AccuTune recommends for this setup, I first have to set this to zero inches of preload. I'm going to tighten the top plate just until it touches the top spring, and from there, every inch I tighten this down is considered one inch of preload. Ash and I did this to both coilovers, we installed them into the Jeep, and for the first time in a month, this Jeep is sitting on its own weight again. So these coils on these coilovers will not work, unfortunately. Right now, we just got the setup. This Jeep is at, at ride height right now, under its own weight, in the front at least. The weight of the Jeep is completely on the coilovers. Like I've said in the past, in the past couple videos, we're looking for five inches of shaft showing at ride height, and we're right now we're looking at nine, which means this thing's way too tall. So that's right, AccuTune is very easy to work with. We're gonna fill out a coil exchange form, and we're gonna be packaging up these coils in the original packaging, send them back, and they'll send me the right ones that we need. So that's too bad, but that was the whole point of everything we did today was to figure out if these were gonna work. So we're gonna get these back out of the Jeep, get the Jeep sitting back on the jack stands. We're gonna get these shipped out and we'll continue on the build and work on something else next week. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. Ash and I appreciate y'all for watching. We're having a lot of fun filming this series for y'all. If you enjoyed the video or if you've enjoyed the rest of the series so far, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave us a comment down below of what you think of the Jeep so far. I, I know it's not much, but I feel like we're making progress. Once again, this is part seven of the Cherokee Resurrection series. We're gonna be putting out a video every single Wednesday until this Jeep pulls out of the shop and out onto the trail. Or until we run out of money. Yeah, or until we run out of money, which is happening very quickly. <laughs> I appreciate y'all for watching. I'll see y'all on the trail and I'll see you next time. continuing the coilover install by installing <clears throat> why are you looking over there now hey get out of there get hey hey get out of there Great. belly no natalie yeah everybody today we're going to be continuing the coilover install oh my god <laughs> natty get out of here this is belly shot hey get out of here hey Natalie, I gotta film this. Hey, everybody! Today we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be continuing the coilover install by fabricating the coilover towers.